Hey everyone, today on Big Out Books, I wanted to talk about the longest books that I have read so far in my life. And this video is, of course, in preparation for the upcoming March of the Mammoths readathon. It is only a few days away from starting on the 1st of March, and all you have to do to participate in this readathon is to try to read at least one book that is over 800 pages in length. So I thought it would be fun to go onto my Goodreads and actually see how many books I have read so far that have met this qualification and I think I came up with about 12. So I'm going to be talking about each of these books and I'm going to be doing it in the order that I have actually read the books. So you can kind of get a sense of my journey as a reader and how my kind of comfort zone and interests have changed over the years. One thing that I learned about myself after looking at my Goodreads page is that for me the sweet spot seems to be books that are around 650 to 790 pages in length. That's where a lot of my favorite books are landing, so it's really sad that I can't talk about them in this video because they are just not long enough. So I think for myself, I still really like immersive and chunky long reads, but not necessarily the like intense next level mammoth reads. Although I do have favorable opinions about most of the books that I'm going to be talking about today. The other fun fact that I learned about myself is also very strange, and out of all of these mammoth-sized books that I've read, I have only ever finished reading 800 plus page books in odd-numbered years. So like, when I saw that, I was like going into full conspiracy mode. Like, why is that a pattern? For some reason, I only ever manage to finish these really long books in odd numbered years. So let me just quickly go through this list for you so you can see what I'm talking about. To start off, I read Infinite Jest in 2009, Anna Karenina in 2011, The Brothers Karamazov, War and Peace, and Middlemarch in the year 2013, The Recognitions, Battle Cry of Freedom, The Executioner's Song, and City on Fire in 2015, and lastly, 2666, Wise Man's Fear, Don Quixote, and Vanity Fair were all books that I read in 2017. I didn't manage to read any 800 plus page books last year in 2018, but now, weirdly enough, that it's 2019, this is the year that we're starting the March of the Mammoths readathon, so I know that I'll be finishing at least one 800 plus page book, which puts me back in this weird twisted cycle of only finishing these really long books on odd numbered years. So moving away from conspiracy mode, let's actually talk about the books themselves. The first mammoth-sized book that I read was Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. This one is clocking in at 1,080 pages if you're reading the endnotes, which of course you should because they contain so many wonderful moments, even if a few of them can be pretty tedious at times. So this was the first really large book that I read. I first picked up this book in the summer when I was still a high school student. I remember taking this along with me on a vacation and it was like a very inconvenient book to travel with but I also only had to pack one book because I knew that this one was going to take me a while to get through and I'm not really sure why I decided to pick up this book. Maybe I was just trying to be a pretentious teenager, but I really didn't know much about this book or David Foster Wallace before going into it. And I think that that was good for me because like there's a lot of hype surrounding this book. There are a lot of people who kind of like to trash this book and say that it's like pretentious garbage. And then there are people who like overly praise it and turn David Foster Wallace into this kind of deity. And this book is also kind of like a famous joke in pop culture. It's that big brick of a book that everyone buys and nobody reads. But I really didn't know anything about this book going into it. And that was kind of a blessing because like I didn't know that it was going to be difficult or challenging. I really just remember getting drawn into the story of this book. There are a few different plots going on in this book. There is the tennis academy at the top of the hill that is full of these troubles but talented tennis players who are like really nerdy but fun to follow. And then at the bottom of the hill you have this halfway house where you have these drug addicts that are trying to turn their life around and then you also have these people that are searching for this video that is so entertaining that it's been killing people. So I just thought that this book was a lot of fun 
I just really enjoyed myself reading this the first time through. I wanted to know what was going to happen to the characters, and there was a lot of humorous moments in the story that kept me wanting to read more. And I remember making a little web with all the characters, trying to like figure out how they were all connected to each other. So I thought that this was um, really fun and not as scary as some people make it out to be. And I even enjoyed myself more on my second read through of the book. So I do think it's one of those ones that it will become more rewarding the more that you read it. So this was a great introduction into the world of big books and this one remains to be one of my favorite big books. The first very long classic that I read was also my first ever Russian classic, and that was Anna Karenina by Lev Tolstoy. This is 963 pages, although I did not have this beautiful vintage edition when I first read this. I remember reading my grandma's old tattered paperback copy of this book. I think it was the unsexy Constance Garnett translation as well, but none of that mattered. I really enjoyed myself, and this kind of opened up like a whole new world for me of classics. And just reading these kind of long and immersive books. I mean, if you've read Anna Karenina, you know that there are certainly some slow moments in this book, but it really didn't bother me. And for most of my high school years, I was kind of trying to read books that were like postmodern and like really weird and edgy, but I really found myself loving this like slow paced story about the lives of these Russian people. It was so fascinating seeing this like pre-revolution side of Russia and I just got so immersed in this story. So I don't remember a ton of details about this plot, you know, it has been a long time since I read it, but I'll always be grateful for this book because it did kind of open that door to me and I went on to just read a lot more classics after this. So I do have really fond memories of reading Anna Karenina. Continuing on with some Russian classics, about two years after reading Anna Karenina, I picked up my first Ever book by Fyodor Dostoevsky, who is one of my all-time favorite authors, and this is one of my all-time favorite books, and this is The Brothers Karamazov. Now, this edition that I have, I guess I'm technically cheating because this one comes in at 796 pages, but like, come on. I went on Goodreads and looked at some other editions, and most of the the editions that you'll find of this book in English do come in at over 800 pages. So I do think that we can count this one. <laughs> this is just like such a magnificent book. It completely blew my mind when I read this one. And it is like one part like really juicy dysfunctional family drama. Like there's murders and schemes and like treacherous people. Like it is a plot that you cannot put down. But at the same time, there's just so much philosophy in this book and it gives you so much to think about like life and like religion and like what's the meaning of life and how to live a good life and it's just like it is a fascinating book. I just truly love this one. It made me think so much but also it was just such a gripping page turner so I cannot recommend this mammoth highly enough. The last Russian classic I have to show you is of course War and Peace by Love Tolstoy. This is probably the longest book that I've read in my life, period. This one comes in at 1,273 pages, so it is truly kind of a beastly sized novel. And I remember really shocking myself because I ended up reading this book in under three weeks. I remember it was again while I was on summer break from university, and I thought I was gonna give myself like the whole summer to get through this book, but I really couldn't put this one down. It was so engaging, like it was so much fun that I just wanted to really burn through this book so I did find this one to be a page turner so I know that a lot of people approach this one by kind of like chunking it off and reading in small sections but it also does work as a binge read I thought that this one was a great time obviously with like the title war and peace like there's a lot of different facets to the story you've got some like battle scene action for people who like that and you also have the like peace moments of the like domestic drama going on on the home front so like I think there's a little something for everyone in this book. The lesson I learned after reading this book is that just because a book may be intimidating in size doesn't mean that it's going to be intimidating in content because I have such fond memories of reading this one. It was a truly pleasurable reading experience for me. The next long classic that I read was Middlemarch by George Eliot. This edition comes in at 920 pages and 
I feel like I'm using this word to describe all of these books, but like, again, this was just like a really enjoyable reading experience for me. And I think the reason that I enjoy Middlemarch so much is that like I'm a deeply nosy person. I really like getting into other people's business and find out what's going on in their lives. And that's kind of like what this whole book does. It just takes you into the lives of so many characters in this small English town and you just learn all of their secrets and all of their thoughts. And I just had a lot of fun doing that again because I'm nosy and I just want to know what's going on with people even if they're fictional. So this was again another one that was just like a very positive reading experience for me. By far the most difficult long novel that I've read so far has been The Recognitions by William Gaddis. This book is 956 pages but it somehow feels like it should be so much more. Like this book is so heavy and they're kind of like pages with like really small font that are just pretty dense in text. And actually looking through this book, this is one of my only books that I've ever actually written in the margins. I usually try to leave my notes in notebooks so that I don't have to annotate my actual books. But this was one where there's just like so many confusing passages. I had to look up translations online and look at references for what the heck Gaddis was talking about. So yeah, this book has kind of been marked up so that I could make my way through it. So this is like a challenging, postmodern text but again it was a really rewarding reading experience. I really had to push myself and my boundaries and my stamina but I came out of this book feeling like I was a much more confident reader that was ready to take on anything and even though this book is like really big and intimidating there are a lot of fun moments in this book. There were some like really humorous scenes in here and it's also making fun of these kind of like artsy people and the conversations that they have together. So like there are a lot of fun moments in this book. This explored some like really interesting concepts. It's about an artist who does forgeries and it's asking whether there is any more value in the original than in these like duplicates and whether people can actually even tell which one is more important or more valuable. Like how do you even assess the quality of art? So it asked a lot of cool questions and even though it was like confusing and difficult, this did push my boundaries and I became a much stronger reader after toughing my way through this one. That being said, I still don't think that I'm ready to face J.R. by this author. That one, I think I'm still like a few years away from trying that one out. The first super long nonfiction book that I ever finished was Battle Cry of Freedom, The Civil War Era by James M. McPherson. This one came in at 882 pages. And funny enough, as long as this book feels, this is actually one of the like shorter books that you can find on the Civil War that will give you like a comprehensive overview of what happened. But really a lot of the books and series that you find about the Civil War are much longer. For example, there's like the very famous Shelby Foote series of books about the Civil War. And this is just volume one out of three. And this one's already over 800 pages. So there are a lot of writers who like to go much more in depth about the Civil War, but I wasn't looking for that. I just need a general overview of what the heck happened because I'm a Canadian and we don't really grow up in school learning much about how deeply messed up the American Civil War was, how truly catastrophic it was in scale. So I found this to be a fascinating read. I really wanted to pick this one up because there was this summer where I was just reading a lot of William Faulkner and I felt like to really understand Faulkner I had to understand the Civil War in order to get the context of Faulkner's post-war South. So I was looking for like a comprehensive one volume overview and this book really did the job. You know, it's not like the jazziest, fanciest rendition, but what I feel like it does well is that it places the war in its larger context. So it's not really just about breaking down each like specific battle, but it's also kind of really getting into like why the war happened and why it mattered and what was going on in the rest of the world. I appreciate how accessible and approachable the history is in this book. Like I said, coming in as a Canadian with not a lot of background knowledge on US politics. So this book broke down some like really complicated ideas in a very easy to understand fashion. And it was a pretty good one volume overview of a very complicated war. My next long book is another nonfiction read. And that is The Executioner's Song by Norman Mailer. And this one is pretty massive. It is clocking in at 1,100 pages. But the weird thing with this book is that it went by so quickly. I feel like I read this one in just a few days. You can see with Mailer's writing style, he just writes these like short paragraphs that makes it just really easy to just 
fly through the pages. So if you're looking for a long book that is not going to take too much time for this readathon, um, maybe you should consider this one, The Executioner's Song. It's kind of like narrative nonfiction. This one is about Gary Gilmore, who is kind of like this screw up in this book like he is like a guy who's kind of messed up his life and then he's starting to turn it around and then he like gets involved into this crime after his trial he is given the death penalty and there's like an intense legal battle going on afterwards where the ACLU is like trying to protest his case and they're trying to save his life whereas Gary Gilmore himself is actually kind of fine with the idea of dying on death row. He kind of doesn't want to save himself and it was like a really strangely gripping and intense kind of story. It seemed like this sort of race around the clock kind of story. So um, this was a really long book that did not take a lot of time to read and one that I couldn't put down. The next book on my list is City on Fire by Garth Risk Halberg. This was one of those just incredibly hyped debut novels. Everyone was buzzing about this book and I thought that I was really going to enjoy it because it's set in New York in the 1970s, kind of that like gritty punk era. So again, I really thought that I was going to like this book, but this is kind of the first book on my list where I really thought that it was just kind of mediocre. So this is maybe the first time where I read a really long book. I think this one is 911 pages and I came out of it feeling just kind of like meh about the experience which if you know that feeling it's not great because you've committed so much time and effort and energy into reading this book and if it's not this really rewarding experience you just feel like you kind of have wasted a lot of your time and it has been um, maybe four years since I've read this book and I can hardly remember anything about it. I can't even tell you any of the characters names in this book which I feel like is a bad sign, right? I spent a lot of time with these people and I really don't remember much about what happened beyond what it says on the blurb of the book. So there's nothing inherently bad about the book but it's just not really memorable enough and not really worth the commitment of making it through its long page count. The last four books that I have to talk about are all books that I have read since joining booktube in the last two years. So the first one of these was 2666 by Roberto Bolaño and this book is 893 pages long and this one gets the special award of being the most depressing book that I've probably ever read in my life. And it's kind of sad because it's like the last project that Roberto Bolaño was working on. So this is, these are kind of the reflections of a man who knows that he's not long for this world and that they are just bleak as hell. Now in some ways this book is a bit refreshing for a longer novel since it is broken into five parts and each of those parts are very like individual stories. So you're not really kind of like stuck in the same situation through the whole book. So in that way it doesn't feel as long as it is but unfortunately this book is majorly dragged down by its like very long middle section that goes into quite graphic detail about copious murders that are happening to women in Mexico and that part just really will slow you down because it's not a page turner you know, reading about this kind of depressing information <laughs> was really hard to stomach. So because of that and some other depressing scenes in this book, I have a hard time kind of collecting my thoughts on this book. Even like two years later, I'm still like, was it worth reading? I think so, but like, I'm not really sure. I'm kind of on the fence with this one. I think there's some excellent writing in here, but there's also a lot of heavy subject matter. So just make sure that you are like in a headspace where you are ready to deal with that before heading into the nightmare that is 26. 66. The next book on my list is a bit of a baby-sized mammoth book. So this is the only mass market paperback that I have on the list. So in many ways this one seems so much smaller than the others, but it still is clocking in at 1,107 pages. So it's still a pretty hefty read. This is The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. This is of course the sequel to the smash fantasy hit The Name of the Wind. And that was a book that I was kind of lukewarm about. There were some intriguing elements to the story that kept me wanting to continue on with the series even though I had some troubles with the narrative voice and I really did not enjoy the second installment in the series. I found this to be actually a pretty tough novel to get through not because it's difficult but just because it was very long and very unedited in my opinion and I felt like it was like one random episode after episode and I had a really tough time forcing myself to finish this story since I wasn't enjoying it pretty much the whole way through.
The next book on this list is one of my favorites, and that is Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes. The Edith Grossman translation comes in at around 940 pages, and this one is just delightful all the way through. Now, for some of these long books, I kind of tried to burn my way through them in only a few weeks, but actually this was one where I really did slow down and take my time. And I think that that was the right way to play it with this book, because it is very repetitive. You know, it is about the adventures of Don Quixote and he's kind of crazy and he's imagining that he's a knight even though the rest of the world doesn't really know what's going on so a lot of the episodes kind of are similar to each other where he's just doing one foolish thing after another so this is kind of a good one where it's better to like space it out so you don't feel kind of overloaded with how repetitive the story might seem so this was one I think I started it in January right at the beginning of the year and I didn't finish it until August so I did really take breaks when I needed them and I think that that was the right way to read this one so this is one I would highly recommend but maybe don't try to feel like you have to get through the whole thing in the March of the Mammoths readathon and the most recent mammoth sized book that I've read is Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray um, my edition of this book is coming in at 883 pages and I can say that I truly loved every minute of this long book. This is one where I did read it in only two weeks because I couldn't put it down. I was having such a blast reading this book because it is kind of a roast on Victorian society. This book is set up like a puppet show so you the reader feel like you are just a spectator in this like ridiculous slapstick comedy. If you're someone who's a bit intimidated about picking up long classics I would highly recommend Vanity Fair because this book is so fun and it doesn't take itself too seriously so I found myself just loving every page of this book. I had such a good time while reading it. So that's it for my list of all the mammoth sized books that I've read so far. I can't wait Wait to try out some new mammoth sized books this month so that I can add more to my list. I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you've read any of these books or if you're considering reading any of these ones for March of the Mammoths. Also what are some of your favorite mammoth sized books because I still haven't fully decided what I want to read for the readathon. So if there is something that I missed on this video I would love to hear what you think that I should read next month. So thank you so much for watching this video and I'll talk to you again soon as I start to decide what my TBR is going to be for the March of the Mammoths readathon. Take care!